Hello dudes, Axel here. Welcome to another Linux -y video. So, in this one, I'm gonna talk about why I'm using Caden Live again for my video editing. For those of you who remember my previous stuff, um, such as one of my DaVinci Resolve videos, linked up there, um, I mentioned how I was really enjoying using DaVinci Resolve despite um, despite a lot of the issues with it, such as no system sound. I'm stubborn about stupid things, don't judge me. Okay, you probably should judge me for that one, but d d just bear with me. So, I was still using DaVinci Resolve, working around the whole sound issue, which no, is not an ideal workflow, but you know what? I made it work, kind of. Anyway, one of the things that I like about DaVinci Resolve, great playback performance, so great, um... Very smooth editing process. Uh, the renders tend to be very fast as well. But also talking about the renders, one of the problems with exporting from Resolve is you don't actually have a whole lot of good formats to export to, at least not on Linux. So like you can um, you could export like, like one thing you could do though is like you could get, you could export to some high quality, less compressed format and then just like convert it later which would probably be a good way to go around it because the only H.2 whatever format it even can export to is, well, it's just MPEG-4, which is basically H.263. So that's like not even H.264 and certainly not H.265 or HVENC, which is uh, something that Caden Live can do. Now, technically, if I were to just export like a quick high quality um, master from DaVinci Resolve then convert it afterwards. That would still work just as well, but I'm lazy and convenience is a very nice thing. So it's really nice with Caden Live that I can just export straight to like H.265 because the file sizes for H.265 are freaking amazing. Like it's so good, so very good. And let me actually show you here just for an example. Now, unfortunately, I got rid of a lot of my previous testing renders and stuff, but um, we can compare here to an uh, HEVC render of a 1440p clip, the same one I've been using in like all of my render test stuff lately because it's just, it's just consistent. It's kind of easy to work with that way. So let me open it up in media info here. This is a 1440p render um, with, uh, let's see, C, uh, it's HEVC set to CRF 23. And the bitrate is only 7,800 kilobits, 200 for audio, so it's 8,000 total. Um, again, 1440p for one minute, 60 megabytes. And the bitrate sounds pretty low, but if we actually open the video, some ships apparently. Um, it's great. Like that still looks fantastic. Ah, my eyes! So that's awesome. If we compare it to the Lightworks render that I have here right next to it, it's also MP4. This one's 720p. I want to assume Lightworks does H.264, but I actually have no idea. Um, let me open that in media info real quick. The Lightworks render is 720p. So that's like a fourth of 1440p, only 20 megabytes less, only 20 less with a little bit lower bitrate, of course, at 720p and also is going to look, I don't know if I'd say a hell of a lot worse, but I mean, it is obviously a lower resolution. So that's a nice thing that I can do with Caden Live that I can't directly do with DaVinci Resolve. Again, could just like convert the, the output with FFmpeg later, but it, do, doing it this way with Caden Live definitely does save a step, so that's nice. And not to mention, unlike Resolve, pretty much every other video editing software on Linux will allow you to hear what you're editing, so that's great too. Um, so that, that's, that's, not, that's not really the main reason why I'm switching back to Caden Live, though. That's just a nice thing as a result of switching back. So why I'm actually switching back is um, kind of a lot simpler than that. Uh, basically, with how my setup is now, ever since I did the uh, recent Ryzen build update. Ryzen 
build update. Link it up there, future self. So after that, um, I switched to a NVMe SSD for my operating system. Only running one OS now, no longer dual booting other distributions. It's just Solus now. And I decided I would go. I would stick with an AMD graphics card to stick with the open source drivers because it's just a lot easier to work with on Linux. And there's, just, in, in my experience, less problems since I've been doing it. So that's nice. The problem is there are less problems, but there is one major problem at this time. Um, OpenCL support on the open source drivers in the state that it, that it is in right now cannot work with DaVinci Resolve. At least not from what I've found so far. So, um, I decided still definitely going to stick with the AMD card, but that does mean I can't use DaVinci Resolve anymore, at least not at this time. So, I'm back to using Kaden Live. So, kind of unfortunate there, but Kaden Live is definitely one of the best open source video editing software out there. So, I, I, wouldn't, really, I wouldn't really say it's a bad thing. But if I had the option, I would probably still go ahead and use Resolve, maybe. The whole, the whole no sound thing is definitely definitely something I should not even be trying to work around because it's kind of a waste of time. But either way, I do like using Resolve, but Caden Live is great too. And in my opinion, probably one of, if not the best, open source video editing programs. It does have its problems though, which I'm going to go into right now. I kind of tease this will be a separate video but we're gonna roll it all into this one so let me go into Kaden live real quick i'm gonna open up uh this project my recent alien isolation video so if we skip ahead here real quick things look quite fine in the timeline just fine with that let me go to a good example for this scene all right so let's look at this hallway shot right here real quick so let me click this you it would help if i actually showed it wouldn't it yeah that would have helped Okay, this is the most recent episode of my Alien Isolation Let's Play. So, as you can see, things look just fine here. And when I have, but when I have it clicked on, showing the effects and stuff, you'll notice I have an effect in here called a Move It Color Fix. So, with Caden Live, um, if we go under the Playback tab, there is um, a GPU. Pro there is GPU. It does have GPU processing available. It's using. It uses the uh, Move It library. And one weird thing that happens when you're using that, let me go into split, let me, um, well, first let me hide this real quick. So that's with the fix, because without this, it looks like that for some reason. Like, everything's just less contrast for some reason. And one thing I noticed when I tried disabling the effects and reloading the project, or reloading the project, it mentioned having to disable a move it dot overlay effect which i i don't know so it does this for some reason with gpu processing enabled but it wasn't too hard to mostly match the colors up to the original footage so it's annoying but since you can save effects anyway it's not that hard to work around you just need to basically do it once save the effect you'll have it then to apply to other stuff in the future it's just Kind of annoying, especially because I found it out after rendering the episode out once, and I was like, wait a second, this doesn't look right. Then I had to re-render it again, and then that episode finally went out, but yeah. So that's a little annoying. It's one little thing with Caden Live. I don't know why it's like that. Okay, I actually don't know if it's Caden Live or if it's the Move It thing or some other weird problem, but it's what I've run into. So I feel like this information should be out there because it's just, just, I don't understand this. Like, let's look at that. That's with the fix. That's without. I didn't know I could do that. Okay, getting distracted now. Can I re recenter that easily? No. Um, yep. So, as you can see, quite a difference in the colors. Again, fix, no fix. It's a, it's a weird problem, but you know, easy to work around, but I, I don't get it with anything else. And again, DaVinci Resolve does have GPU acceleration for stuff, so. You know, but um, you might be asking, well, okay, do you need the GPU processing enabled? Technically, I don't need it, but there's a lot of nice GPU effects that I would much rather be able to use, such as the correction for it in the first place. So yeah, if you're using Caden Live, you probably do want the GPU processing. 
because it's very nice because these GPU effects are you can basically play them back in real time whereas if you use a bunch of the other ones to be CPU based you wouldn't really be able to play them back in real time like for example if we go on here I don't know how well this will work while I'm recording but zoom in my timeline real quick because like for example the opacity itself that I have on here it's like destroyed take it a little closer to that <gasps> Okay, that's another, okay, you know what? That's a great example of another weird problem with Caden Live. Let me open up my opacity effect here. I was looking at the right one. Yeah, why didn't it do anything? Why'd you not do anything? Hold on. No, now, now it's in there again. You saw that though, right? When I played it back, like I had you selected. You just ignored it? Okay, maybe it's not a problem like I think, wait, now it faded out. I swear that did not fade out the first time. I'm not crazy, right? Am I crazy? Maybe I'm crazy. But anyway, um, so there you go. That's why I'm using Caden Live again. And Caden Live is good. It is, like, I, like I've said like five times now, in my opinion, probably the best open source video editing software. But then at the same time, it is also the one that I have the most experience with. I have not used OpenShot very much. I have not used Shotcut. I have not used PTV. Um, and I do already have a video on my thoughts on Caden Live versus Blender, although that was more about rendering performance, not so much playback and editing performance, which in that case, I give the win to Caden Live because with pretty much anything you throw at Blender in my experience, anything like high quality, high res stuff, you need to do a, like a low quality proxy. Like there's, there's no way around it with Blender and that kind of sucks and Adding any sorts of effects since the VSC in Blender is not GPU accelerated at all from what I'm aware of. The render times can just get ridiculous, so... If only Blender's video editing portion of it was better optimized for modern hardware. That would be great, but it's not, so... Kinda gotta give the win to Caden Life. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this one, dudes. If you guys like this, want to th want to see more things like it, make sure to like, consider subscribing, all that good stuff. Till next time, this has been Axel. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you dudes in the next one.